What's going on everyone? Cannon here today and uh, as always I get surprises uh, here at the camp from time to time. I'm in the rec pond and there is a bit of an intruder in the rec pond. I woke up earlier and I noticed something wasn't quite right. We have a visitor from the wild so I'm gonna bring you guys underwater and uh, I think you guys will enjoy this. I love living in Florida because I get to share my home with some wild animals. So let's go under and I'll show you who decided to wander on into this pond. Man, it never gets old living here in Florida. I'm so glad I live down here. As a young lad up in Long Island, I dreamed of getting down to Florida so that I could see animals like this every single day. And it's an extra special bonus that they decide to show up in my backyard. Now, I only live one block away from thousands of acres of natural lands. So my guess is this little guy was hatched out in those swamp lands and then wandered through a couple of backyards and found mine. And since, obviously, you guys know I love reptiles and I don't mind wildlife showing up, you probably felt safe enough to hang out here for a little while. But it's very, very cool to know that these animals are doing so well. Here in Florida, because they were put on the endangered species list many, many years ago in the 70s, they have been able to rebound and they are a true uh, success story for conservation. The hunt was regulated, the farming was regulated, and because of all those efforts, now there's over a million wild alligators in the state of Florida, and they're doing very well throughout their entire range, which coincidentally is from extreme South Virginia all the way through the Atlantic coast of North Carolina, and then even into some parts of Oklahoma when you go out to the west, but they are a true survival story. Now, alligators are pretty robust, but they are also some of the more mellow of the crocodilians. As you can see, when I grabbed that little guy, he didn't even try and bite me. So that's pretty good stuff. They have a better temperament. That being said, don't go touching alligators. It's against the law, and you could also lose a finger or possibly your life. It's so important to treat every freshwater body here in Florida like it's got at least a baby alligator in it. So don't walk your dogs close to the water's edge and definitely don't bring small children down to areas that are not designated for swimming. We don't want to have any horrible accidents here in South Florida just because of complacency. Definitely know that you're in alligator country. Now, fortunately for me, this is a little guy. Only little ones can kind of come through the fencing that I have on my property. I have never seen a larger gator make its way through the property. I can handle this animal, but if the animal were over four foot, sadly, if it was a nuisanced animal, then unfortunately the animal, if it's over four foot, is going to be humanely euthanized. So it's very important that you know the difference. Don't just call if you see an alligator. A nuisance gator is a gator that has lost its fear of human beings. You wanna make sure that you never feed wild alligators. Let's go grab him and I'll bring him up topside so you guys can see him a little bit better. All right, this little guy sure is squirmy. Let's go ahead and talk about him a little bit. All right, very good. So, as you can imagine, I was pretty excited when I looked down and I saw a baby gator, or rather, a juvenile alligator here in the rec pond. Super exciting. Now, this little guy had been living out back. Uh, we had a lot of rain over the last couple of weeks, and one downpour in particular, I think he came in that night. They tend to look around for new places to kind of conquer and get a, uh, get a stronghold in, and I guess he kind of wandered up here from the backyard from the new gator pen, or rather gator pond, and uh, well, there he is. Now, in Florida, it is illegal to own one of these animals or touch them if they're wild, uh, without special authorization. I do have my class two permit to keep uh, class two crocodilians, caimans and alligators. Uh, but I also have a special authorizations permit uh, through Bush Wildlife that if a little guy like this showed up, 
uh, we'd have no problem moving him around. Now, what I'm going to do with this guy, after we watch him swim a little bit more, because it's kind of fun, I'm going to go ahead and put him back out in that back pond and uh, just let him do his thing. Uh, he is small enough that he can get through the fence holes. He's really not being contained here. And my guess is that since he's moving around, he's going to kind of move on and just look for a new home. So that's what's going to happen. Uh, this little guy uh, has not been being fed by me. Uh, so I haven't done anything to alter its natural behavior. As you can see, it just wants to get away from me. Although he has a pretty good disposition, he hasn't really tried to bite, which is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, so very awesome animal. Uh, just for those of you guys who are new to the channel, maybe don't know much about crocodilians, let's go ahead and talk to you. If you look on the bottom of his jaw and on the top part of the lip, uh, on his top jaw, you'll see something called ISOs. They're called integumentary sensory organs. And these are... A really cool adaptation that crocodilians have. Crocodiles will actually have them on each of their scales, whereas the gators just have them on the top and bottom jaw, and they can detect changes in pressure. And they've actually done experiments where they blindfolded these animals, and they were still able to catch fish that were swimming close by. So it's a really cool adaptation if you're living in murky, swampy water, and you still need to get a bite. So they're able to do that, and you can really just see how well suited these animals are for an aquatic lifestyle. However, from time to time, as we've seen why we have this animal in this pond, here in Florida, gators will wander along looking for new habitat. In fact, that's what little alligators do. They hatch, they stay with the mother for a while. Once they leave the mother, they go in search of their own territory. And in Florida, you've got to be able to wander on land because we go through a wet and dry season. So to get to new habitat, new aquatic habitat, you may have to actually travel on land. So pretty cool. Let's go ahead. I'll get you guys a few more shots of this little dude swimming, and then let's put him back in the back pond and he can get on with his life and we can leave him alone. All right, little dude. Oh, he's gonna realize that I've taken off my hands. And you can really see how perfect he is. His eyes and nose are above the water. And when he goes under, watch for that nictitating membrane, okay? Here we go. So fast, just wants nothing to do with me, which is good because when I release him, I want him to be afraid of people. Now a little guy like this is going to eat fish, small invertebrates, smaller reptiles, and as he grows, so will his appetite and so will his prey items. When they're full grown at about 11, well, they get full grown at about uh, 8, 7, 8 foot if you're going to be a female, and you can see some large bull gators that are upwards of 11 and 12 foot, and once they get that big, they can crush turtle shells, they eat large water birds, they'll eat raccoons, small deer, we even have feral hogs that they can sometimes find and eat. So they are really the apex predator or top predator here in Florida. Just an incredible species that survived so many millions of years and has adapted to the southeastern United States. Incredibly. Well, what do you say folks, I think it's time we get this little guy out of here and get him on his way. But it was really cool to have a little visit. All right. Well, there you have it, everybody. Uh, really cool to get some native Florida wildlife in this pond. Although, I got to be honest, I don't think Kate's going to be too psyched when she hears about this. <laughs> but nonetheless, I like to show you guys everything that's going on here at the camp and uh, we're going to go ahead and put this little guy back where he was hanging out and then I'm assuming sometime late in the evening this guy may decide he's had enough of Camp Cannon and wants to go find himself another home and there are canals just back that way. So let's hope this little guy fares better than our buddy Big Al who we had to put down because somebody shot him. I just want people to see that these animals really aren't trying to hurt anybody. They're just looking for a new place to live. And if you do have a problem with a nuisance gator, you got to call a state licensed alligator trapper or call Bush Wildlife if you're down here in South Florida. All right, everybody, let's say goodbye to this little guy. See you, buddy. And there he goes. He'll probably pop up here in a second just to kind of see where he's at. Woo! Okay, well another fun video or at least i think so 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. Ah, hope you guys enjoyed it here today. I always love doing this kind of stuff. It's so amazing to live here where I can share my home with these wild animals and uh, give you guys a little bit of an education on them as well. All right, I'm out of here. Hope you guys had a great new year. And uh, I think I'm gonna go back in the pond and swim around a little bit. I'll see you guys later.